Got another oddball for the museum and for you. This is a uh, what we call a banana fan because of the shape of the vents in the motor housing. It's made by Evergo and relabeled in this particular case for Leslie Lack. Um, I actually I have one of these new in box. I'm trying to remember what label is on the box. We'll check that out in a second. First we're going to look at the label on the top of the fan if I can see it from the Let's see if I can see it in the video. Right there. Is it coming up for you? I don't know if you can see that. Made in Hong Kong. It is a copy of a Hunter original. And uh, other than a few details, it's very similar to a Hunter original. The vents, obviously. Um, and this, the blade brackets, the blades, um, the more conventional ones of these still have blades different from a Hunter original, but this particular model has very oddly shaped blades. We typically refer to them as baseball bat blades, which is probably my least favorite blade design for these, but it's also the least common. So I thought that would be cool for the museum. And a few other things which about it are unique. You can see it has two pull chains, and we'll get to that in a second. It also has a 28-pull uh, motor, which is relatively slow, but actually moves a decent amount of air because the blade pitch is very steep and the blades are wide. Let's go look at the new in-box one real quick, as long as we're uh, looking. It says Classic Deluxe. That's what the conventional blade design looks like. I don't know that it actually has a brand name on it. The reason I was looking, I was curious to see if any of these had the Union label. It says... Nope, it just says Classic Deluxe. It doesn't say anything about a brand name at all. There's another one there. And, uh... That one says U01, but no no brand name on it. This one, let's see if I can see a label. I can let's see if I can get to it with the camera. This is a different video than I would normally do, but I don't mind that at all. I like to keep things interesting, and like I said, I want this to be kind of similar to just hanging out with me for a day at the shop. So, let's see if we can see the label in there. Montgomery Ward, they were relabeled for Ward. Does it have a brand name? I can't see with my phone. I'm hoping that maybe somebody in the video can see, or obviously me when I get back to the computer. I'm going to try to grab a chair, if I have one. I keep a lot of chairs around here, but I also have a ton of stuff piled around because I've been gathering fans for the museum. So let's see if I can see anything on here that will help us out. That one says Evergo as well. So maybe none of these were made in the Union Factory. Per what I've been told, um, Union and Evergo were two factories in the same area owned by the same people, but were two different factories. And, uh, in my experience, all the fans that I've gotten out of the uh, Union Factory have been cast iron, and all the fans out of the Evergo Factory have been either cast aluminum or stamped. But these are cast iron. So, or at least some of them are. There are a few different variations. This particular variation has the uh, shaded pole motor. You can see the windings in there. But other than being oil bath, it actually has a sealed bearing here inside the switch housing. So it does not require oil, but it operates the same way that a uh, fan that does require oil would operate. Um, like I said, you can see the motor windings in there. It's a shaded pull motor. It's a single speed, single direction motor. 
go back over here since I have these out which is cool I don't have too many fans out this is the same basic design I can't remember I believe this one also has sealed bearings they had an oil bath version and they had a sealed bearings version this one has what we would call a skeletal motor in it it's essentially a spinner motor but um, trying to get you to see it in there it's uh, you can see the fins it's a really big cast iron motor that's open on the top and just has a rotor on the bottom so okay let's get back to that one I said this is the most unusual version I have because it's the dual pull chains and sealed bearings and the weird shaped blades. That's a pretty odd combination. The dual pull chains actually operate a variable speed control. You pull it and it starts out on high. And as you pull it, now it's a little slower. 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 It's a little slower. And you keep on going till you get all the way to low pretty cool you could actually have a long pull chain on both of them and then be able to change the speeds on the fan from a you know, great distance below and still be variable speed as far as I know this is the only fan that has this design um, Emerson had something similar on their friction drive fans they had a knob on the outside of the switch housing where you could attach uh, chains or string to it but it was not nearly as practical so this is a pretty cool design and uh, I'm just gonna stop it by hand so we can see how slow it goes on low again this is a particularly slow fan overall because being a 28 pull motor somebody who knows more about motors than I do can explain why a 28 pull motor is gonna be slower than say an 18 pull motor I understand but I don't understand well enough to be able to explain it to somebody else if that makes sense <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, I had it explained to me years ago by Bill Phantom, who is the uh, smartest guy I know when it comes to motors and many, many other things. Um, so, it's a nice low speed. This uh, fan is particularly quiet. The other one like this that you saw over there is a lot noisier. It buzzes quite a bit with the variable speed control. Um, the version of this that's brown and brass with the dark wood blades, uh, not cane, is a very important childhood fan to me. My uncle, my dad's twin actually, who recently passed, had one in his kitchen when I was growing up and I loved it very much so. There's a picture on uh, various groups and I think on my photo bucket. It was, uh, like I said, brown and polished brass with dark wood blades, um, three light tulip kit, and um, I it was reversible. I remember that because I remember reversing it as a kid, but I'm pretty sure it was the skeletal motor because I don't remember seeing coils but I was a kid, so who knows. But I've also never come across one that was reversible with the shaded pull motor. Um, I'd always asked him to uh, give it to me when he moved. And uh, he, I guess he didn't realize that I was serious because I was very young and he did move and leave it behind. And coincidentally, the house he moved into after that had the uh, shaded pull version with the cane blades. Um, they were pretty common around here because... Uh, Menard sold them. That's where my uncle got the first one. He went to Menard's and bought it. And uh, some Menard's locations even had them in the snack bars. And uh, the one that was in his second house um, came from Montgomery Ward, which was also popular in that area. They were in St. Paul. I can't remember if I mentioned that already. So, let's keep going with the video. Done a lot of talking today. That's fine. You guys can learn things whether you want to or not. Flow speed.
hear a little bit of buzz now. It's not silent, but not outrageously loud. Wobbles a little bit. I did not balance the blades. Um, if it has power applied to it in the museum, then I'll balance it there. If it does not, then I probably won't balance it at all. These blade arms are very, very brittle, and I don't want to risk breaking them if I uh, don't have to. Starting to move some good air here. This is the high speed. I believe they're all 28 pole as far as the shaded pole versions, but the uh, version in my uh, uncle's second house that was Montgomery Ward that was a uh, shaded pole and oil bath went slower than this on high. This is not outrageously slow, but it's uh, not exceptionally fast either. Like I said, it's a good breeze. I don't know if you can hear that. So let's do spin down time. I gotta try to remember which chain to pull. Good, I figured it out. For years I thought about putting this fan in my parents' kitchen. What I would have done is I have a set of uh, regular white blades, and uh, at least I thought I have a set of regular white blades, and I would have put those on it because I really don't like these. I would have loved to have swapped the bottom plate and the blade arms out for brass. I had a white and brass version. I could not find a uh, brass bottom plate and I wasn't wild about doing it with solid white, so that's why it never happened. But this was a contender for the kitchen. The moss that's there now that a lot of you guys are familiar with, uh, I like it. My parents like it. Not that they're picky. They really don't notice one fan versus the other as long as they work well. Paint's peeling on this one, as you can see. Evergo had some pretty bad factory paint jobs. Well, as you can see, it stopped. Thanks for watching.